All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be paper trading the MES uh, futures contract, micro uh, ES futures contract for the trading session of Friday, May 23rd. And what we're going to be doing through this trading session is I've marked out the London Open, the London Silver Bullet uh, hour, the NYSC AM Silver Bullet hour, and the NYSC PM. And so we're looking for a Silver Bullet trade to form uh, during those times. And I found that the Silver Bullet model can offer uh, a pretty reliable, pretty reliable setup. So that's what we have here is we have our um, 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, 2 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I've marked that. I've marked out our buy side liquidity up at 42.25 three quarters. I've marked out an order block that we have uh, 42.13 three quarters, and I've marked out the New York opening price. Uh, Going to be in the next candle here. Which is going to be uh, 42, 18, 25. So we're starting on a 15-minute chart where we've marked out our uh, our silver bullet hours, and we are going to get started. Lock. Okay, so sort of trading in the middle of the range here, starting out uh, at midnight. So. Nothing really to take here. Nothing that I'm seeing. So we're coming down to an order block that we formed on Thursday as well as uh, this wick here, which this, uh, what I've noticed is that, especially I've seen this on ES quite a bit, is that when they want to keep price in a range, they'll have both sides with long wicks like this. They kind of look like doji candles, but they'll use the midpoint of that um, as as a reference point, basically, for price. So coming down, not seeing very much. I do get a little bit of a bounce off of this, uh, the consequent encroachment of this wick. We get a displacement higher. Uh, run above some short-term highs and then a rejection at this fair value gap here. Now uh, we're going to be trading lower, trading back into this order block here. And so the other thing that I've noticed is that oftentimes price is going to want to reference these same points multiple times. So it's going to be an order block but then also a reclaimed order block because it's going to bounce off of the same order block twice. So we're coming into the London Open. We're coming into the London uh, hour and we're seeing if we can get a fair value gap form. We have a push into, it's trying to push down into sell side liquidity. We didn't really get the silver bullet in London um, today. So no, no real fair value gaps on the five minute time frame formed, but we are bouncing off of this, you can see order block and reclaimed order block. So we're gonna buy. Let's see how that works out. And then as we come back up to this fair value gap that we're retesting, I'm gonna close this out. Okay, so now we're trading in the overnight session and we have a fair value gap form that we're breaking away from. So this is going to be a breakaway fair value gap right here. This price leaves it open and then displaces higher. So could be potentially targeting buy side now so I'm going to purchase and let's see so we come back down
We're testing that fair value gap. Still in the trade. And looks like it wants to come down and test an order block down here. So I'm going to stay in the trade, and that's going to be a loss. So what happened there? So we did have a, a breakaway fair value gap that formed in the overnight session, and we did actually get a move that took us up four and a half points. But price ended up referencing this over here. So you can see that we have this long wicked candle, and then the midpoint of that is going to be an algorithmic reference point as it's seen as a form of inefficiency. So that is what's going to keep us in in the range basically and price is going to reference that so as we move lower we're coming to a place where price has bounced before and we're coming into uh, sell side so we have relative equal lows here so it looks like price want to, wants to maybe uh, relative equal lows so as price comes down let's see if it wants to pop those lows not yet so what do we get here we get a move above a short term uh, high so we have a market structure sift here so we have a market structure shift and a displacement higher which is a good sign that we're probably going to get a move potentially up to this volume imbalance up here or to buy side liquidity. So I'm going to buy. Go long. And so now we're getting a displacement higher and it does look like it's going to be uh, it pushed to this volume imbalance here. So you can see with the arrow that I put that there is a volume imbalance right there. So price reference that and then rejected. So I'm going to sell. And now we're moving forward. Price is still moving higher. It comes down to this order block right here. looks like it wants to bounce that. It's going to hit the same order block twice. So it's going to be a, a reclaimed order block that it's bouncing off of. And so now I'm thinking that we're probably going to get a move up into buy side liquidity. So here we have an order block and then a reclaimed order block. And it's a reclaimed order block because basically it got hit twice. And price is often going to reference these same levels multiple times. So that's one thing that I've noticed in my price analysis is that, is that you see the same levels will get referenced multiple times. And so wherever price wants to turn, it's gonna, it could potentially turn at the same level multiple times because it's filling in inefficiency, for example. So now we're gonna buy, and as we displace higher, our stop would be below this um, order block. So we're looking now for buy side to get taken out because we have one, two, three, four, five, six highs. So I'm looking for a push into that buy side liquidity. Let's see if we get it. Okay, we do. So now we're out of the trade and we're going to change this to our buy side liquidity is taken. So our buy side liquidity was just taken and we're about to come into the uh, New York AM session. So as we displace lower, we end up bouncing off of this uh, order block here, which would now be a breaker block. And then where it wants to bounce is potentially it wants to fill in this fair value gap. I'm not going to trade it though. 
Okay, so we see that it does fill in that fair value gap that was just formed. So price came down to this breaker block right here. So it came down to this breaker block and it bounced up to fill fill in the fair value gap that was just formed. So we're coming into NYSC open. We have a displacement lower. So now at this point from 10 to 11 we're looking for our silver bullet setup. So let's drop into a three minute chart and we have a fair value gap formed here and then you can see the price comes back and rejects it. So that should be a silver bullet setup. So we're going to go short. I didn't mean to sell six. Okay. So price is respecting. So it came up a little bit higher than I would want it to. But you can see that price was basically respecting this fair value gap. So now we, we're looking for at least five points and we're still moving lower. Okay, so between 10 and 11 p.m. the silver bullet trade is you're looking for a gap to form and then that fair value gap to be repriced to and then drive on the nearest uh, either imbalance, inefficiency, or pool of liquidity. So we see that at the start of the hour, the top of the hour, we had a fair value gap form. You can see that right here. And then price came up and traded through it, but really wasn't able to, to strongly um, close above it. Now you could have also taken this as your silver bullet. So we had a fair value gap form here, and then this one would, would have been a lot more clean. So honestly, really, the, the entry should have been here and then we're looking for a displacement lower so price came up and it well see if I can see it on the five minute chart yeah so this five minute fair value gap. Yeah. Okay, so you can see that between 10 and 11 Eastern Standard Time, we had a five minute fair value gap form, and then price came up and repriced to it and strongly rejected, which was our signal to get short. So a, a beautiful silver bullet there, and we're gonna go ahead and close out that trade. And then as we come lower, we're getting a displacement lower, and where does price bounce off of? So price is referencing all the way back here and it's referencing this volume imbalance back here. So price ended up referencing that bullish volume imbalance and repricing to it. Okay so now we're moving on and we had a pretty strong uh, down day on Friday and then this low here that's referencing something so it's basically referencing a couple of ticks but you can see it's the bottom of this fair value gap here so this fair value gap low is essentially what price was referencing when it was moving lower So we can see that price bounced off of the, basically the low of this fair value gap and it also it initially bounced off of this volume imbalance. So we're going to move down to our three minute chart again. And we're still moving lower. 
So we ended up getting a bounce off of... This price is always referencing something. So we take our arrow here and draw this to the left. We'll see that on the five minute chart it was filling in this fair value gap right here. So basically you can see that as price came down it was repricing, it was rebalancing to multiple inefficiencies as it came down. So it was repricing this fair value gap, it was repricing also down to this lower fair value gap as well and then uh, bouncing this last example pretty much on the, on the midpoint of the consequent encroachment of that fair value gap. So that's what price was aiming towards there. And then I was working on this earlier, and it was also um, a standard of this range right here. So if we take this high to this low of this range, and then we clone that, and I'll make I'll make this different colors. So if we clone that, we get our standard projection, our standard deviation projections, and you'll notice that whenever you have a range form the expansion out of that range up or down is going to be basically some standard deviation variable of the prior range. So in this case we see that we had two, a two standard deviation move lower. So we take this range that we had in the yellow box and then we project that lower and it was basically a, a two standard deviation move lower. Some of the, sometimes you'll see it be two and a half, sometimes it'll be three and you'll also see four but it's it'll be some price uses these prior ranges and then it will project them lower on some standard deviation. Okay, so we have a fair value gap here and the high of which is at 42019 so we're thinking that price is going to want to um, come in and fill in that fair value gap. It does right here. It reprices to it and then we're noticing these long wicks. Remember these long wicks, what I've noticed is that if if they want to keep price in, in a range, that's basically how they'll do it, is they'll use the long wicks is one way that they'll do it. Okay, so we're in the we're in the New York lunch hour, and as you can see, we turned off these lows here, the mid, basically the consequent encroachment of these wicks, and we turned on those. So that that's what these two lows used as a reference point. We also bounced off of this fair value gap here on the five minute chart. And as we move forward, price is coming into a small range, basically. And as we come into our 2 to 3 p.m. time frame, I'm going to take us down to the three minute chart. And we're going to be practicing our silver bullet trade. So we're looking in the uh, between 2 and 3 p.m. for a fair value gap to be formed and then price hopefully to, re, to rebalance to it and then we're looking for an expansion into some pool of liquidity so here we have our fair value gap formed and then price re, re, uh, prices to it and it looks like it's going to hold it as support so now we're going to buy and we're looking for at least five points so right here is the fair value gap that formed between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. and then you can see that price rebalanced to it meaning it came back to it and then didn't reject exactly off of the fair value gap low it came a few ticks lower and then it ended up rejecting off of uh, off of this uh, breaker block. So we had a high, we had a low, and we had a higher high, and then so this would be a breaker block or an order block. And as we came down into about the mean threshold of that breaker block, um, it's also going to be referencing the same level that it turned at twice. So it's going to be exp expanding higher. 
we're looking for at least five points. So, you know, we're hoping for at least basically here. So we close that out. And then price is going to consolidate into a small range. It do get a little bit more of an expansion higher. And that's basically going to be the end of the trading day on Friday. So that was it, folks. I think there were more trades there that could have been taken than I was showing, but I wanted to practice my uh, silver bullets. And y'all have a good one.